Hello students and welcome to the session. Today we will be discussing the last thing about AP and then moving on to another type of sequence. So AP basically discusses about a type of sequence wherein the difference of any two consecutive terms in the sequence is constant. We call that constant difference as the common difference. The last topic about AP is on selection of terms of an AP. Now this topic holds a lot of importance because many a times in the questions you are just given that there are four terms which are in AP and they exercise such relationships. There are five terms which are in AP and they exercise certain different type of relationships. There are six terms which are in AP and they are actually having these, these properties. So find out these six terms, find out these five terms, find out these four and three terms. The point is that you are not given those three terms explicitly. In that case, what do you do is based upon the property which the terms of an AP exercise, you actually assume the three terms to be something. So that is what we study in this topic. If you are given three terms are in AP and they exercise such relationships, what are the assumptions which you are going to make for those three terms? That let this, 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 let these be the three terms for that AP. And once you have found the unknowns, you can plug in the values and get the three terms exactly what they are. Similarly for 4, similarly for 5, similarly for 6. So let's see how do you actually go for selection or assumption of the terms of an AP when you are not explicitly given the terms of an AP. So here we are going to look at three columns about how many terms you are given the information. Depending upon on how many terms you are given the information, you will be assuming about the terms. And depending upon the terms that you select, you basically have middle term and common difference. So let's see. Suppose in some question you are given that there are three terms of an AP. You select those three terms as A minus D, A and A plus D. This is the selection, this is the assumption of three terms that you make when you are given any three terms are in AP. You say one is A minus D, A, A plus D. You can see that these three terms right now consist of two unknowns A and D right and you can see that these terms are in AP. What is the middle term of the sequence? It is A. What is the common difference? A minus A minus D which is A minus A plus D which is D. A plus D minus A again D. So D is the common difference which this AP is satisfying. Clear? So what happens whenever you are given the information that any three terms are in AP and you are not explicitly given those three terms, you take these three as the terms and then your task is that by using the given properties, you compute A and D, plug in the values of A and D and get the exact three terms which were in AP. Similarly, if the question speaks about four terms in AP, you assume those four terms are A minus 3D a minus D, A plus D and A plus 3D. These are the four terms which you assume are in AP if you are not explicitly given. Over here as you can see there are four terms so obviously you cannot get one middle term. There are two middle terms A minus D and A plus D and what is the common difference you can see A minus D minus A minus 3D which is A minus D minus A plus 3D. A minus A cancels 3D minus D gives you 2D. Similarly over here A plus D minus A minus D. So that is A plus D minus A plus D. So A minus A cancels D plus D 2D again. 
Similarly, a plus 3d minus a plus d, which is a plus 3d minus a minus d. Again, plus a minus a cancels, you're left with 3d minus d, which is 2d again. So over here, you're getting two middle terms, and the common difference is 2d. And these assumptions are not just random assumptions, they have been made on the grounds that the four terms with this kept as the first, the second, the third, the fourth, because ordering matters. This kept as the first, the second, the third, the fourth, follow the very fashion of arithmetic progression that this minus this, this minus this, this minus this is a constant term. The difference of any two consecutive terms is a constant. Then if you have Suppose five terms, information regarding five terms of an AP, you assume these five terms to be A minus 2D, A minus D, A, A plus D, and A plus 2D. These are the assumptions of five terms that you do in this order itself so that they turn out to be giving you AP of five terms. Over here again, you can see 5 is an odd number. You are going to get only one middle term. In this case, it is A. And what is the common difference? You can see A minus D minus A minus 2D. So A minus D minus A plus 2D. A minus A cancels, 2D minus D is D. Again, A minus A minus D, which is A minus A plus D, again D. A plus D minus A, again D. A plus 2D minus A minus D. 2D minus D is again D. So the common difference you can see is coming out to be D. And if I go to the last case, which is if the question is concerning six terms of an AP, in that case, what are the six terms that you assume which are in arithmetic progression fashion? So they are A minus 5D a minus 3d, a minus d, a plus d, a plus 3d, a plus 5d. These are the six terms that you assume in the same fashion, this being first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Because this minus this, this minus this, Difference of any two consecutive terms, you will see it's a constant term. Over here, because there are six terms and six is even, you don't get one middle term, you get two middle terms. Again, it is A minus D, A plus D. And what is the common difference? You can see A minus 3D minus A plus 5D. So you're left with 5D minus 3D, which is 2D. Again, A minus D minus A plus 3D. You're left with 3D minus D, which is 2D. A plus D minus A plus D, D plus D, 2D. A plus 3D minus A minus D, 3D minus D, 2D. A plus 5D minus A minus 3D, you're left with 5D minus 3D, which is again 2D. So you are getting 2D as the common difference. So if over here, till in these four cases, if you carefully see, whenever you are having odd number of terms arranged in an arithmetic progress, progression fashion, you are getting A to be the middle term always and D to be the common difference. Whereas if I am saying there are even number of terms arranged in an AP fashion, you are getting two middle terms A minus D, A plus D, A minus D, A plus D and you are getting 2D as the common difference. Understood? This is the pattern which keeps on following. So let's write this observation down. In case of odd terms, the middle term of the AP is A and common difference and common difference is D. In case of odd terms, the middle term of the AP is A and common difference is D and 
in case of even terms the middle term or i should write the middle terms are because in the even case you don't get one middle term the middle terms are a minus d a plus d and the common difference is 2d and this fashion goes on continuing fine this was about selection of terms of an ap when explicitly you're not given the terms of an ap rather just the properties are given more than that why do we select it in this fashion the reason is if you are given that four terms are there in ap such that their sum is equal to whatever when you are going to add these four terms you can see plus 3d minus 3d plus d minus d gets cancelled if you are given sum of three terms of an ap when you add these three you get d minus d cancels out when you get sum of five terms of an ap again you add you get d's are cancelling out again d's are cancelling out you're just left with a's and that sum that numeric value which is given to you with that particular equation you can find out a very easily that is why we assume in such a fashion so that whenever sum of terms of an ap are given to us we can actually proceed with these assumptions to get the d's cancel out and we get the value of a then and there let's look at a question based upon this how actually does this reap us any benefit the question is four different terms are in ap four different terms are in ap such that their sum is 24 and their product is 945 find the terms this is how the question is generally posed so because i am given four different terms are in ap and as you can see explicitly no fashion is given to me in which what are the terms or how are they arranged so i am going to assume the four terms i am going to say let the four terms be let the four terms be let's see whenever you have to select four terms of an ap you have a minus 3d a minus d a plus d a plus 3d where these are the middle terms and 2d is the common difference so these are the terms i am going to actually select let the four terms be a minus 3d a minus d a plus d and a plus 3d then sum is given to be 24 so i'm going to say a minus 3d plus a minus d plus a plus d plus a plus 3d is 24 and the advantage is that every d is cancel out you are left with a plus a plus a plus a that is 4 times a is 24 which implies a is 6 so then and there then and there by this systematic assumption of four terms of the ap i have got the first term not the first term but i have got the value of the first unknown over here a is not the first term a is the not even the middle term in this case because four is even i needed a although and now i need d as well to get the four terms of the ap so let's use the next point i am given product is 945 so i am given a minus 3d into a minus d into a plus d into a plus 3d is 945 now a minus 3d into a plus d a plus 3d 
a minus b into a plus b is a square minus b square. So, a minus 3d into a plus 3d will be a square minus 9d square, isn't it? a minus 3d, a plus 3d will be a square minus 9d square multiplied by a minus d into a plus d will again be a square minus d square. We have already got the value of a, plug it in over here, you get 36 minus 9d square into 36 minus d square. Whenever you land in such a situation, you can see you are going to get this when you are going to open this bracket up as a quadratic equation in d square. So, what we instead do is assume d square equal to t because by this assumption everything will be boiling down to t. So, I will be getting quadratic in terms of t. So, let d square is equal to t. This implies you have 36 minus 9t and 36 minus t is 945. Now you are going to get quadratic in t and you will find by this very easy simplification that t will come out to be 1. t comes out to be 1, I do not need t, I need d and d square is equal to 1 that means because d square is t. So, this means d is equal to plus minus 1. Now, a 6, d is plus or minus 1. So, two cases arise in which these four terms can actually sit as a p. If you take a as 6 and d as 1, 1 is positive, right? In that case, what are the four terms? a minus 3 d, a minus d, a plus d and a plus 3 d. This becomes 3 comma 5 comma 7 comma 9. This is an increasing a p. Whereas if I take case 2, a is 6, d is minus 1 which is less than 0. Your terms are again a minus 3d, a minus d, a plus d and a plus 3d. So, what you get is 9, 7, 5 and 3. Same terms but in decreasing fashion. You are getting the same terms only. If I make a set out of them, the sets are the same, but as sequences, they are different. The ordering is completely different. This is an increasing AP, this is a decreasing AP. That is how you apply this concept of selection of terms of an AP over the questions to actually get the terms of an AP. Now that our discussion over arithmetic progression has completed, we are going to talk about sequences wherein any two consecutive terms difference is not a constant, but this time we are going to talk about sequences in which the ratio of any two consecutive terms will be a constant. Yes, AP deals with such sequences in which the difference of any two consecutive terms is a constant, right? t2 minus t1, where term 2 minus term 1 term 3 minus term 2, term 4 minus term 3, term 5 minus term 4, all are the same values known as the common difference denoted by D. Such a sequence wherein every two terms, two consecutive terms are equally placed, that is called a arithmetic progression. We are going to talk about now another type of sequences known as the geometric progression. geometric progression. Basically again a sequence is what is called a geometric progression provided the ratio of any two consecutive terms is a constant. AP deals with difference, GP deals with ratio. 
AP says difference of any two consecutive terms should be a constant. GP says ratio of any two consecutive terms should be a constant. Understood? That's the only clear cut difference between AP and GP and it is sequences which are arithmetic progressions or geometric progressions depending upon the difference of any two consecutive terms is a constant or ratio of any two terms is a constant, consecutive terms is a constant. Clear? So let's define geometric progression as I said also known as GP. Over here there is a restriction. You are wanting to take the ratio, second term upon first term, third term upon second term, fourth term upon third term. That means terms are going in the denominator and the answer is coming out to be a constant real number. Clearly, if I want real number as the answer, the denominator cannot be 0. So, none of the terms in the sequence which is qualifying to be called a GP can be 0. No terms of a sequence which is a GP is ever 0. So, a sequence of non-zero terms is called a geometric progression or a GP, it's called a geometric progression or a GP if the ratio of any term, if the ratio of any term and its immediate preceding term is a constant. If the ratio of any term and its immediate preceding term is a constant. So that means If A1, A2, A3, An, An plus 1, this is a sequence which is a geometric progression. This is only possible if A2 upon A1 is equal to A3 upon A2 is equal to a4 upon a3 and so on a n plus 1 upon its immediate preceding term which is a n is equal to constant. We denote this constant by r. So I can say that a n plus 1 upon a n is equal to constant for all n in it. Either you can elaboratively write this or you can just write this. This is what is enough. Because when you put n equals 1, you get a2 upon a1 is a constant. n equals 2, you get a3 upon a2 is a constant. a4 upon a3 is a constant. That is the same constant value which is equal to r. Fine. Or I can also say this value is independent of n. That means in place of n you put any natural number you are going to get the ratio of any term with its immediate preceding term. The answer is not going to change of that ratio. As you change n, the ratio doesn't change, it still remains constant. So this ratio is independent of n. n can vary however it wants, this ratio is not going to vary. So for example, I can say a sequence given by a n is equals to 3 into 2 to the power n 
is a GP. So you have to answer this question whether it's a GP or not a GP. So see, this is how the sequence's nth term is defined. So if I talk about the sequence, if you put n equals 1, you get 3 into 2, that is 6. When you put n equals 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 into 3 is 12, which is the second term. If you put n equals 3, you get 2 cube 8, 8 into 3 is 24. When you put n equals 4, you get 16, 16 into 3 is 48, and so on. This is your sequence. Right? Now, this is your sequence explicitly. Question is whether it is a GP or not. Over here, you can see this is your term 1, this is term 2, this is term 3, and this is term 4. So, if you begin with term 2 upon term 1, this is equal to 12 upon 6, which is 2. Right? Then if you talk about A3 upon A2, this is what? 24 upon 12, which is again 2. Right? Then when you talk about A4 upon A3, it is 48 upon 24, which is again 2. And similarly, if you talk about An plus 1 upon An, it will be equal to what? 3 into 2 to the power n plus 1 upon 3 into 2 to the power n, which is what? This is 3 into 2 to the power n into 2 upon 3 into 2 to the power n. This, 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 this cancels. You are again left with just a 2. So for any n, for any n, I am getting 3 into 2 to the power n plus 1 upon 3 into 2 to the power n is 2 only. Therefore, I am getting these are equal and they are equal to 2. So, r is equal to 2. The common ratio is equal to 2. This is definitely a GP. Fine. Over here, as I just said, this constant term the constant term denoted by R is called the common ratio. It is called the common ratio. Fine. This is the discussion about GP. Now, if you remember, if you remember we had talked about something in AP, what was it? If suppose I am given the first term and I was given the common difference, I was able to find out the entire AP. Similarly, if you are given the first term of a GP and the common ratio of the GP, can you find out the entire GP or not is the question. So let's see. Suppose A is the first term. of a GP and R is the common ratio of the same GP. I have to find the entire GP. Okay. GP is nothing but a sequence having first term. What will be the second term? Second term will be such that when I divide it by first term, I get an R. Right, that's the common ratio. This implies question mark is A R. So this question mark is A R. That's the second term. Similarly, what is the third term? Third term should be such that when I divide it by second term, I get an R, which implies this question mark is A R square. 
AR into R and therefore this question mark is again AR square. Similarly, if you move ahead with the next term, suppose this is what I want to find out. This question mark is in the GP, so it is a term when I divide it by the preceding, immediate preceding, I get the common ratio which is the constant term. So question mark becomes AR cube. And this is what continues, you can see the fashion. First term is A, second term is A into R, R to the power 1 basically. Third term has A R square, fourth term has A R cube, so nth term will be A R to the power n minus 1. What do I want you to understand from here is that if you are given, first of all, if you are given the first term of a GP and common ratio of the GP, you can find out the entire GP. Secondly, very, very, very importantly, whenever you are given a GP, whenever a GP is given to you explicitly, definitely it is following this fashion. Second term is equal to first term into the common ratio. Third term is equal to second term into the common ratio. Fourth term is equal to third term into the common ratio. This is the only way the terms of a GP can be arranged. There is no other fashion. If they have to, if they have to satisfy the condition that second term upon first term is R, third term upon second term is R, fourth term upon third term is R, that can only happen if they actually are equal to these terms. So if you go to this example, over here you can see the first term is 6 and R is equal to 2. So second term is A into R, 6 into 2. Third term is A into R square, 6 into 2 square, which is 6 into 4, that's 24. Fourth term is A into R cube, 6 into 2 cube. 2 cube is 8, 6 into 8 is 48. So always in a GP, Whenever you have a GP, definitely, definitely the first term will be A, a common ratio will be R and every other term of the GP is expressible in terms of A and R. Second term will be A into R, third will be A into R square, fourth will be A into R cube and so on and it will be A into R to the power n minus 1. So remember this very, very nicely, not just am I saying that if you know a term of a GP, not just the first term. Even if you know a term of a GP and the common ratio, you can calculate the adjacent terms, right? And hence calculate all the terms. Because all the terms of a GP are expressible in terms of A and R, where A is the first term, R is the common ratio. And whenever you are given a GP, definitely, definitely you can write the GP, every term of the GP in terms of A and R. Fine? That brings me to the concept of general term which we just discussed. So what does the concept say? Let's see. So as we had over here, the concept of general term the concept of general term says that let A be the first term and R be the common ratio let A be the first term and R be the common ratio then the GP is given by A AR AR square AR cube and so on and the nth term of the GP denoted by a n is equal to a into r to the power n minus 1. 
clear? We understood why this GP comes out, I explained you over here, okay? And therefore, the general term, nth term of a GP is given by this formula. If you want the fifth term, you can find out by this formula. If you want the sixth term, you can find out by this formula. This gives you every term of the GP in terms of first term and the common, common ratio. Also, in a finite GP, consisting of m terms in a finite GP consisting of m terms the nth term from the end now this is repetition only we have done this in AP the nth term from the end of a finite GP, obviously I need finite because I want to count from the end. The nth term of a finite GP from the end is m minus n plus 1th term from the beginning. From the beginning. That is nth term from the end is equal to a m minus n plus 1 which is what first term into r to the power m minus n plus 1 minus 1 which is equals to a r to the power m minus n clear because this is how the general term was given. So, a m plus n minus 1 will be, m minus n plus 1 will be given by, given by a r to the power m minus n plus 1 minus 1, which is m minus n. Now that we have understood this, let us move ahead with watching a beautiful property which these a GP terms exercise. See, let a b C, B in GP. Suppose these three terms are in GP, this implies ratio of second upon first is equal to ratio of third upon second, which implies B square is equal to AC. This is very, very, very important property which three terms which are arranged in a geometric progression pattern exercise that the square of the middle term is equal to the product of the extremes first and third. So if I take this example, if x, 2x plus 2, 3x plus 3, are three terms in GP, find x, okay. Over here, these are the three terms in GP. This is the first, this is the second, this is the third. So, this is a1, this is a2, this is a3 or this is a, this is b, this is c. You can see that the second term whole square, if these are in GP, A2 whole square is equal to A1 into A3, which implies 2x plus 2 whole square is equal to x into 3x plus 3, which implies, square this up, 4x squared plus 4 plus 8x equals 3x squared plus 3x. So, 4x square minus 3x square is x square, 8x minus 3x is 5x plus 4 equals 0. So, you have x square plus 4x plus x plus 4 equals 0. I just broke the middle term. It was simple quadratic equation, which implies I am left with x, x plus 4 plus 1, x plus 4 equals 0 which gives me next as what? In the next step, let us see what we get. This is x plus 1 into x plus 4 equals 0. This implies x equals minus 1 and minus 4. 
If you try and see when you put x equals minus 1, this is minus 1, no problem. When you put x equals minus 1, you get minus 2 plus 2 which is 0 and terms of a GP can never be 0, right? Otherwise, you will not be able to divide this by this. That would not give you a real number. So that is why terms of a GP cannot be 0. So I cannot take minus 1 and therefore acceptable value is x equals minus 4. So that happens to be the value you get minus 4. When you put x equals minus 4, you get minus 8 plus 2 which is minus 6. And when you put x equals minus 2 over here, what you get is minus 4 over here. You get minus 12 plus 3, that's minus 9. These are the terms of the GP. And common ratio which they exercise, what is that? Minus 6 upon minus 4, which is equal to minus 9 upon minus 6, which is my common ratio denoted by R. And that is, you can see from here and from here, it is 3 upon 2. Clear? So that was about GP. We will be proceeding ahead with some more concepts about the sum and many much more. So I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.